Hi everybody, Krista Cowan here with another episode of the Barefoot Genealogist. This week we're talking about Pennsylvania records and it seems like a lot of you are really interested. I checked the room before um, I hopped on camera and it looks like there's over 400 of you joining us live. I imagine once we archive this up on YouTube we'll have several thousand more hits. Pennsylvania records are a really hot topic. For those of you who aren't aware, um, Pennsylvania um, records have been notoriously closed, and so access to them has been really difficult, really difficult to get. Um, people request records, and the response from the state has historically been, um, unless you know the exact date of death and how you're related to this person, we can't give you access to that record, which is great, except for that's usually what we're trying to find out, is that information. So um, this last December, Governor Corbett signed a new bill into law um, that goes into effect in just a couple of weeks. And um, Bill 361 is, make, I have to look at my notes so I make sure I tell you correctly, um, it will make birth certificates open and available 105 years after the event and it will make death certificates available 50 years after the event. And so um, you can now access records, well in middle of February you'll be able to access records directly from the state um, that fall within those parameters. And, and so that's really great news for those of us who have Pennsylvania research um, that we need to do and have been hitting brick walls because of some of the access laws. So thank you to Governor Corbett and most especially thank you to all of the people who worked so hard um, for about 10 years, if I understand correctly, to get that legislation signed into law. Um, with that kind of anticipation, uh, Ancestry.com has launched a new database. That new database is called Pennsylvania Town and Church Records. It dates back to the 1700s, and you ready for this? There are over 7.5 million records in this collection. So today I'm going to give you some information about how to access these records, what these records are going to tell you, um, maybe help you learn a little bit more about Pennsylvania history so that as you're doing your research, um, you know where to look and what you're looking for. Okay, hopefully that's enough information for you. Let's do this. Okay, the first thing that I'm going to recommend that you do, especially if you're new to Pennsylvania research, is learn a little bit about the place. The, the couple of quick easy ways to do that. Um, the first one is place pages. Now we haven't talked about, I haven't talked about place pages before, I think Anne may have, but um, here's how you access those. Hover um, over search and click this top option, search all records. <coughs> That's going to take you to a search form. Scroll past that, keep going, keep going, and at the bottom of that page there is a map. You can see there's different tabs here on this map. Um, if you have an Ancestry.com subscription it will default I believe to the US. If you have an Ancestry.co.uk or .ca subscription it will default to whichever appropriate location. Now, on this map, you can click any one of these states and it will take you to a place page. So for today's purposes, we're going to click on Pennsylvania, but even if you're not interested specifically in Pennsylvania records, these principles will, will work no matter what, right? So when you go to the Pennsylvania place page, the first thing you're going to see is a list, <coughs> excuse me, is a list of all the databases that Ancestry.com has that contain records for that location. Now we've broken them into categories, and you'll see we just show you a few databases in that category, and then if you want to see the rest, you would just click View All. Now, the database we're going to be looking at today is this top one. You see it has this little new flag, 7.5 million records. Um, we'll get to that, okay? Um, but you can see, I just want to show you here, that, that this place page will list all the databases specific to that location. Okay, we'll scroll back up to the top here. Um, there are a couple of other tabs. There's a history tab where we just give you some brief information about the location so that you can learn a little bit more about it. Then there's also a resource tab, and I use this one a lot. It gives you information about um, things like in this case missing counties that were missed in the census or um, links to contact people who hold vital records. In this case, um, the Pennsylvania, the State Department of Health, which is where you'll be able to contact to get copies of those birth and death records um, in mid-February. 
<clears throat> they even have a specific link for genealogy requests. Access to marriage and divorce records, access to the Pennsylvania State Archives. Um, then there's some additional links to other resources, both online and offline, um, that, that will help you in your Pennsylvania State research. So I use these place pages a lot specifically for this resource tab. The other really cool thing you can do on this place page is you can just click the search from here and you'll notice that it automatically fills in the lived in location to Pennsylvania so that you're searching, you, you can search all records for just that state. So kind of a handy little thing to do, these place pages. I really, really like them. Okay, the second thing that you can do to learn about the place is to use the Ancestry Wiki. Now we talked about this last time and a lot of you have already um, gone out and checked that out for different things. It is a fabulous resource. The main reason this is such a great resource is we have taken the books, the Red Book and the Source, which are two books that no genealogist should be without, and we have completely digitized them and put them online. They're available for free, whether you have a subscription or a paid subscription or not, and you can access that um, in the Learning Center. So let me just show you one more time. Hover over Learning Center, scroll all the way down to Family History Wiki, that will take you to the wiki. You can browse it by just clicking through things or what I would recommend in this search box over here, just put in the location that you're interested in and click search. And usually the very first thing that comes up will be the, the entry out of the Red Book for that location. So you can then read about the history of the place. And here's where um, today's topic really um, comes into play. One of the things about Pennsylvania is um, that it was founded by groups of very, very religious people. And the records that we're looking at today, these vital records that we have access to, are actually church records. And so if you can start to learn a little bit about the religious history of the place, um, if you don't know what religion your ancestor was, you can start to learn a little bit more about where the different um, faiths settled so that you can start to circle around that a little bit. And this article contains a lot of information about that religious history for the state of Pennsylvania. Also, there are links over here on the right-hand side where you can just click through and learn more about specific kinds of records for that location. So, for example, here's the Pennsylvania Vital Records page. Again, you can read up on access to information. Um, I don't think we've updated this yet since Bill 361 was signed by the governor last month, so we'll need to do that. Um, but that's how the that's how the wiki works. Okay, so that takes you um, that takes you to that. The next thing is just to look at the card catalog and see what records Ancestry.com has available for that location. So that's what we're going to do. <clears throat> Again, the card catalog is the very bottom option under search and your location filters are going to be over here as soon as this page loads. They're going to be over here on the left hand side. If you just scroll down, you'll see filter by location. I want to click on US, and then I want to scroll down and click on Pennsylvania. And you can see here that we have over almost 10,000 databases that contain records from the state of Pennsylvania. Um, you'll notice the it always sorts by popularity. I think I've told you that before. But, um, and so the censuses are almost always going to be at the top of the list. You can change the sort of this list. And for today's purposes, what we're going to do is we're going to look at date added. So what that does is it puts the newest stuff at the top of the list. You see every one of these databases has a new tag, right? Um, that means that it's been added within just the last um, few weeks. Maybe I think it might be a couple of months. Um, and so I check this list regularly, sorted by this way, so that I can see what new stuff's been added. So today we're going to look at Pennsylvania church and town records. Again, these date back to 1708, as you can see, and they go through 1985, which is fantastic. Um, again, 7.5 million records in this collection. There's a lot of stuff going on here. So let me just, again, give you a little bit of education before you just dive in and start searching. On every database we have what's called a database description. To find that, you want to scroll down past the search box, and here you'll see source information. You, you'll discover that this particular collection we received from the Historical Society of Pennsylvania. That's where Ancestry.com um, got access to these records. 
If you keep going, you'll discover exactly where these records came from. Um, they're primarily Protestant church records from congregations all over Pennsylvania. Um, there are some other kinds of records in this collection as well. And there's all these types of records, right? Um, I won't read through them all because hopefully you can either see it on your screen or you'll go check this database out yourself. Um, but all of these different kinds of records. Now, we told you today that we'd be talking about Pennsylvania vitals. Here's the thing. Um, the state officially didn't start keeping birth and death records until 1906, which means that prior to that, um, most people, your, the birth, marriage, and death information is going to be found in church records. And that's why these records are so important. You'll see um, things like um, a baptism or a confirmation that will often list um, the child's birth date in addition to their baptismal date. Um, marriages and burials were also handled by the church. And so again, that information is going to be found in these records. So these are not official state vital records because the state didn't start keeping those until the 1900s. What these are is church are church records of, of those events in their life that will contain information about birth, marriage, and death. So I would recommend that you just read through this, become a little bit more familiar with what it is that you're going to look at. <coughs> now, we could just dive in and start searching, and you're more than welcome to do that. Um, but let me just show you another feature about the databases on Ancestry.com that I love and use quite a bit. Over here, oh, and I haven't reset it. Over here on the right-hand side of your screen, you have a Browse This Collection option. What you'll see is um, a list of all of the counties that are included in this collection. So, for example, if you're interested in records, and the example I've got here is Philadelphia, if you're interested in records from Philadelphia County, or county and then it will bring up a list of the cities in that county. So maybe I'm interested in Philadelphia City, right? And then it will bring up a list of denominations. And so if you know what religion um, your family practiced, then you can come in here and look that way. You'll notice also, and this is just kind of the way we had to break this out, because if you remember, this database is primarily church records, but we do have some non-church records in here, and it was just, rather than making another separate drop-down box, we just decided to put them all in this list. So you'll see here, amongst the Baptist and Catholic and Episcopalian records, we also have cemetery or funeral records. Scroll down a little bit, there's some family history records that the um, historical society either acquired or created. There's some general records, and I think that that is the last, oh, no, there's one more non-religious category, and that's this not stated, <clears throat> which just means it was a collection of records that um, the historical society had, and we weren't quite sure what those were about. And so, so that's how this list breaks down, so you can browse through those records that way. Let me just show you how that works. I'm going to look at Catholic records. <coughs> Excuse me, my goodness. And you'll see that uh, the name of the organization in that browse shows up here. If I had selected, um, you know, Baptist, you'll see there's more churches available that way. Okay. Um, so I can just click on one of those then, especially if you know that your family was affiliated with one of those. And what comes up, you'll see here 172 images, okay, over here. And this is for the Blockley Baptist Church, which is the Baptist denomination in Philadelphia City, Philadelphia County. So that's how you know what you're looking at. And then if you want, you can just browse these like you would a roll of microfilm. So um, you can see here, this is the Blockley Berman Education Society, and it's their minutes from 1832 to 1835. And then I could just go image by image through these records and browse them to um, learn more about, you know, about this particular society. You might find you know, this, because these are society minutes, that might not seem very pertinent or, or um, interesting to some of you. But if you found out that your family was associated with this church, Certainly, you'd want to learn more about um, the community that they were affiliated with. You might start to discover some families that they were connected with that may have married in. Um, oftentimes, that's how, several times, that's how I've discovered the maiden name of a woman, was by discovering the families that they were affiliated with, either in their neighborhood or especially through their um, religious affiliation. So, that's how that works, okay? 
Um, one other thing that I would recommend doing, I don't know if you use this or not, um, if you don't have quick links on your home page, you can customize your home page and add them. And what I would recommend doing, if you think you're going to be spending a lot of time in this particular database over the next few weeks, I would actually bookmark it. And here's the easiest, the easiest way to do that. Open up the database and copy this um, link, okay? And then go in here to your quick links. You can add a link and... Did I not click on it? Oh, you know what? I have to, I, there's a limit and I think I've reached my limit. So I would have to delete something here. Let's delete this. Okay. Now let's add a link. Okay. And I can then add, just paste that web address and then give it a title, click save. And now you'll see here this Pennsylvania church records database is in my quick links. So I don't have to go looking for it every time if I'm going to use it. I can just click straight on that. It'll take me straight to the database and I can start searching that way. Okay, um, lots of ways to search this. We have a couple of more, a few more minutes. And so let me just um, run through a few based on some emails that I've received and, and some things that were posted on our Facebook wall and see if we can't find some things for you. So somebody was looking for Samuel Gray who was the son of a man named Alexander Gray. And if I remember correctly, she said it was 1838. I may be mistaken. I'm going to click search, and you'll see here, um, because we just provided limited information, nothing was higher than three stars matching. And so it gives you this little message that maybe you want to give us more information because there's 4,200 hits, right, um, based on just that limited amount of information. Now, the message that I received didn't say where they were from, but here is a Samuel Gray in Lancaster County, um, and it's a baptism, so always pay attention to what the event is, and the baptism was in 1839. So if you believe that he was born in 1838, it's very likely that a baptism would have or could have occurred in 1839. Also be aware that baptisms could have taken place a lot longer. My great-grandfather was actually baptized when he was in his 60s. Um, I don't know if he just changed churches or if he changed, um, you know, like actual just changed within a certain faith or if he um, changed religions entirely. Um, now that I think about that, maybe that's a question I should ask my mother. Um, but but he wasn't baptized until he was 60. So, so pay attention to what the record or the event type is. Um, but don't be thrown off if the year is later in their life, because remember, these are, um, you know, these are church records. They're not vital records specifically. Okay. Now, when you click through to the record page, you're going to see here this particular Samuel Gray um, is not her Samuel Gray, but we'll use it as an example. Um, he was born. It lists the birth date as well as the baptismal date in this case, and then it lists the place and the church that they were affiliated with. Okay, so it's the Bethany United Church of Christ. Here's the, here are the parents' names. So one of the things that you can do once you've found this information, um, click through, of course, to the original image so that you can look at it, and you'll discover some of these are some of these are very lovely and typewritten, like this one. Um, many of these are handwritten and are going to be just very, very, very difficult to read. So you're going to have to be a little bit patient with it. Now you'll notice here, um, this is the page that it took me to for Samuel. I'm on image 198 of 697. So again, what I would recommend doing if you are interested in learning more about what this book's about, right? You've got the birth date, you've got the baptismal date, you've got the parents' names. But one of the things you might want to do is just go back to image one and make sure that you really understand what this book's about, what years it covers, um, what other information might be included here, right? So it told you that it was the Bethany United Church of Christ, but this particular um, book also says that the former name of the church was the German Reformed, Evangelical and Reformed, and First Reformed Church, um, and, and that... The church used to be in a different location, right? So you might learn some more about not just the, the denomination, but about how the church evolved. And that becomes really important because oftentimes people were affiliated with the same church for several generations. And so learn that information. Again, then scroll through these images one at a time. See if there's anything further that you can learn. 
The last thing that I would do is once I had this information, I would go searching for other people in the same family who, um, who might have been born or baptized in that same church. So the easiest way to do that is going to be by these parents' names and this um, and probably the location. So you can come back over here to your search box. Let me clear that. Okay, I'm going to be looking for all children of Justice Gray and his wife Barbara who were baptized, right? That's not an option, event of baptism, but you put it in the any event field. So who were baptized in Afreda, which is in Lancaster County. So I'm going to say only show me people baptized in that location with parents with these names. I'm going to click search and you'll see that I come up with a few other people um, that might fit into that specific family. So that's just one of the ways that you can search this particular database. Again, remember 7.5 million records. Um, we've looked at baptism records, but there are, if I go back to my previous search results, you'll see we have other records, um, which could be a um, it could be a historical society record. It could be a, a cemetery record. Um, we have marriage records that are included here. These death records, uh, sometimes they're specifically death records. Again, sometimes they're burial records through the church, which will contain death information, um, confirmation records. So you could find that there would be several records for your one person. So get a little bit creative in how you're searching these, right? If you remember, um, all I had was a birth year, but if you don't know who he married or when he got married, maybe try adding, you know, 20 or 25 years to this particular date, right? And, oh, putting it in the marriage field. <laughs> and then see, do a search again and see what you can find, okay? Um, and play with that that way, particularly maybe focusing on a specific location. If you know your family was in a particular county, make sure you put that in and narrow your search results that way. Okay, great database. Um, again, make sure you learn some things about the place. Let's just run through a few of these things um, so that you get a refresher and if anybody um, wasn't able to get the sound on this, they can have access to it. You'll find it in the card catalog. Again, I would recommend that you bookmark it in your quick links if you think you're gonna be spending a lot of time here so that you have easy access to it. There are over 7.5 million records in this particular collection. And remember that they primarily consist of Protestant church records, but there are records from other sources, um, including uh, funeral homes and cemeteries and newspapers, some family histories and different things collected by that historical society. Um, most of these records, actually many of these records, include birth, marriage, and death record, death dates and information. So even though they're not specifically vital records from the state, they do have that information. And in fact, one of the only places you're going to find that information. Um, okay, that's all I have for you on this topic today. I will hop into the chat room on live stream as soon as I sign off. So if you have some questions, feel free to stick around and I would be happy to talk to you about that. Um, if you're watching this um, on YouTube or an archived version later, that's fine. Just add your questions here. Come over to our Facebook page. Um, either I or our fantastic community who is always ready to help will be able to answer those questions. Um, that's um, today's topic. Um, I just would remind you to just dive right in and start searching if you want or browse by location to see what's available. Possibly even try searching by just a surname and a location to see what else comes up for other members of that family. Also, if you want to chat directly with me, um, I will be doing another tweet chat tomorrow. Um, no, just kidding. Thursday, Thursday, January 26th. That will be at 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 o'clock Pacific. Those usually last about an hour to an hour and a half. The easiest way to get to that is to go to tweetchat.com slash room slash acom chat. And we'll be there. Um, again, that's 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 o'clock Pacific on Thursday, the 26th. Um, if you think you can ask a family history question in 140 characters or less, I'll see if I can answer it in 140 characters or less. Um, if you can't, you can always email um, at ask at ancestry.com. We do read through all of those emails and use those to put together both these presentations and then Anne uses them and answers them really specifically, some of them, over on our Tumblr blog. 
Um, so hopefully that gives you enough information about contacting us. I hope you have tons of fun with these Pennsylvania records. I know I may not get anything else done today because I'll be spending some time with them. Um, so until next time, this is Krista Cowan. I hope you have fun climbing your family tree, no matter which direction you're going. <laughs>